Tonight, join Eye on L.A. as we set sail on the world's most luxurious sailing ship, the Windstar, and go in search of Europe's most exclusive resorts that up until now have been off-limits to all but the rich and famous. And what better destination to begin our search than exclusive Monte Carlo, the playground of the international jet set and port of departure for the Windstar. From there, we sail to Saint-Tropez, where you're overdressed even if you're topless. To Elba, to see why Napoleon wouldn't mind being exiled today. To Portofino, Italy's most exclusive hideaway. And to Portofiario, where we'll discover Europe's best-kept secret beaches. See what life is like when money is no object. It's a week of shopping, dining, and living like royalty. Plus, get a look at Eye on L.A. like you've never seen before. Bloopers and all. Hi, everybody. I'm Chuck Henry, and welcome to Monte Carlo. Yes, that tiny little country that you can actually walk around in in less than an hour. A land of fabulous nightlife, beautiful people, fantastic beaches. But Monte Carlo is not why we're here. No, we're here to take a fantastic cruise aboard the largest sailing cruise vessel in the Mediterranean. The Windsong Star. song star Hi. it's the wind song the wind song star star Winston. star song yeah it's right behind me it's the wind star Woo. ever wish you had your own private yacht to sail to the world's most exclusive ports of call well this is it all right, so you have to share it with 140 other people. But considering that ships of this size usually cram 500 or more people on board, the ratio of ship space to passengers can make it seem like the ship is all yours. Gourmet meals are served in a leisurely and relaxed atmosphere, and the accommodations resemble that of a luxury hotel, not the usual closet-like cabin. What's so special about it is the fact that it almost has the essence of being a private yacht. I think that the the flavor of this ship is that you come aboard, there's only 148 passengers, and it's magic time from the time they step on board. Everybody has a time to do what they want to do, as much as they want to do, or as little as they want to do for the entire cruise. <laughs> Excuse me. Have you seen Chuck Henry anywhere by any chance? No, I don't know where he is. He's always in the ship, maybe in the back or the front. I don't know, we have to check. Grazie. It changes all the time. Oh, okay. So the people that come on the cruise want to have the freedom. We give them lots of suggestions. We have lots of itineraries planned for them when they go on shore. The people that come on the ship are very sophisticated. They know exactly what they want to do with their time. They're usually very high-powered, curious types. Hi, Melody? Yeah. Hi, I'm Chuck Henry. I understand you were looking for me? You bet. I'm here to do a story on people who have the greatest jobs in the world. Yeah. And a lot of people think you have the greatest job in the world. Could I follow you around and see if it's true? Why not? Okay, I admit it. I do have a great job. I mean, I get to travel to the most beautiful destinations in the world, and I get paid to do it. But I really enjoy giving people who maybe aren't able to travel a chance to see all these wonderful places, like Saint-Tropez, the first stop on our Mediterranean cruise. You know, this way, they're able to experience the festive waterfront, the exclusive shops, and the local culinary treats. I love French food. I think that's one of the best things about the country. What do you like best? French food, anything. Mm. Crepes. Perfect, because this is the place. Yeah, I like crepes or any kind of French pastry. And the nice thing about it is they'll put anything in it. Can we get a, a crepe? Yes. Yes. Put something sugary in it. Chocolate, yeah, yes. This is one of the tougher aspects of the job, I take it. Well, you know the old saying, it's a tough job, but somebody has to do it. Well, I'm just glad I'm along to help do it. 
my favorite French food right here, crepes. You bet. You. And they put anything on them. Thank you, man. Oh, yeah, sugar, yeah, lots of oh. sugar. More, 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 more. More Whoa. sugar, more sugar. No more diet, sugar. more sugar. <laughs> this is a wonderful one because all this has is sugar and chocolate. Sugar. You want to taste it? No, 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 you didn't do that right. Mm, it's say. terrible, it's hot. They, they take little dainty little pieces. That's not the way you do it. Get it down here where the chocolate lies. Mm. Down at this end. Be careful. <laughs> mm. Good? Yeah, but that's that's the best thing. you got to take a big bite okay. and get a lot of that chocolate. Just Another try. Down. Another try. Now, I know there's a famous beach in Saint-Tropez. And isn't I on L.A. known for its beach stories? You mean uh, stories that show beautiful bodies in revealing bikinis, playing games, swimming, or just sunbathing? That's right. Nah, it's just a rumor. Perhaps the most famous beach on the Riviera is San Tropez Tahiti Beach. And, uh, well, you know the beautiful bodies I was telling you about? This is the place. The weather here, well... I hope it will be always beautiful like today, but I've been here, I told you last year, and it was great. Every day, and uh, always uh, blue sky, always sun. The sea is always good. Well, Tahiti Beach certainly lives up to its reputation as the in place to see people who want to be seen enjoying the sea scene. See? See. So right. So right. Well, that's our cue. We sail in one hour to our next stop, Italy. Alba, Corsica, Portofino. And the best reason why this is the world's greatest job. And what could be a better reason than a secret beach with crystal clear water for incredible scuba diving? World-class windsurfing. An e-ticket ride through the Mediterranean and a romantic Italian hideaway to hide away. Coming up on Eye on L.A. It's only from a perspective like this that you can truly appreciate the beauty and, yes, the majesty of that vessel, all 440 feet of her. One of the great things about cruising along the Riviera is the close proximity of so many hidden ports, such as Elba, one of the most picturesque islands in Europe. Now, Elba is also the place where Napoleon was exiled for two years. Now, if you've got to be exiled for two years, I've got to tell you, this is the place to be, and I'll show you why. Ah, yes. It's exactly what I'm looking for. This is a beautiful beach. See, now, this is what I like about traveling, is just finding little spots like this that people don't go to, except those three people down there. Yeah, this is gorgeous. You know, it's a good thing we don't have to climb back up and do it again. Why would we do that? Because unless the cameraman gets the shot in one take, then we have to do it over and over and over again until the cameraman is satisfied. You'll see what I mean. I think I already do. Anyway, what do you think of this? Now, here is a hidden beach on an island, very secluded, that was once considered to come here was punishment. <laughs> I'm guilty. <laughs> You're guilty? I think we're all guilty. This is perfect. I see what you mean when you say this is why your job is one of the best in the world. And it only gets better. Better how? Well, try windsurfing. Oh, I don't know how to windsurf. <laughs> That's what I said to my camera crew. And do you think that mattered? Nah. You just tell me when you'd like to be cast adrift, as they say. Okay. Bon voyage. Bon voyage. If we miss you, it's Portofino, okay? Oh, great. What? That's good. You'll be easy to find if anything happens. That bathing suit, I'm sure would glow in the dark. Here I go. No, you're not going anywhere. I'm not, am I? Woo! Now you're going somewhere. Bop, bop, bop. I can't tell you how happy I am Melanie is doing this. Usually, I'm the guy that has to go out and make a fool of myself. Nice job. 
Uh, it was nice there for a while. If Chuck thinks he's gonna stay dry while I get soaked, well, he has another thing coming. Melanie, when you said we were taking a leisurely ride on a banana boat, it's not exactly what I had in mind. You know, Chuck, the scuba diving, the windsurfing, and most of all, the banana boat do make your job great. Especially if I ever get the seaweed scraped off my teeth. <laughs> but I think my favorite part is finding these quaint little towns, like Portofino, hidden among the huge cliffs. It's so romantic. Well, our handy little Windstar guide here says that Portofino is a favorite stopover for the international jet set and can accommodate over a hundred yachts in its long, narrow bay. What a perfect place to live. Yeah, well, good luck, because it also says that there are only a few hotels and the villas owned by wealthy industrialists are seldom rented. Also, new construction has been banned from the waterfront, so Portofino might be out of the question. I recommend Porta Veneri instead. Not only is Porta Veneri quaint and romantic, but it's also an authentic fishing village, and it's only a two hours drive from Florence. It's a beautiful little town, isn't it? It really is. Do you ever get lost? Lost? Yeah. No, not really, because you see, I always take a map wherever I go. Not just any map with streets, see? My maps all have pictures, see, uh -huh. of the buildings. So, <laughs> it's real easy. Like when we go to Florence, all I have to do is find the building I want to photograph, and then we just walk to the building, and that's it. Great. We never get lost. <laughs> But if you're going to get lost, this is the place to do it. This is Florence, a city lost in time. The Renaissance was born here, and though hundreds of years have passed since that time, the Renaissance lingers here still, as though the intervening centuries had never happened. Men who shaped our world lived here and are now buried here. Men like Michelangelo, Machiavelli, Dante, and Galileo. It's a timeless blend of the past and the present. If it's made in Italy, bargains you're after, Florence is the place for gold and silver and leather goods. The covered bridge behind me is called Ponte Vecchio. It's a bridge across the Arno River, and for almost 400 years, it's been the exclusive domain of gold and silversmiths. Now, how about the leather goods? Going to find all kind of leather goods at the Leather School, which is about a 15-minute walk beyond the bridge. What makes the Leather School unique is that it's located in the church of Santa Croce, after World War II, the Franciscan Fathers established the school to perpetuate Florentine leatherwork. The school has flourished ever since. This is a church because the school is actually owned by the Franciscan Friars of the Holy Cross Church, which is this one. All the garments are made here in the leather school? Yes, they're all made here. Oh, Everything you see here is made. Tell me about this. How much would, this is obviously a, a lady's coat, how much would something like this sell for in the United States? Oh, in the United States approximately 800. Uh -huh. Because this is lamb and antelope. Yeah, so this beautiful. is the finest quality of leather yeah. you can find. And, and here you could buy it for about 400, what? 400, 400. Well, this is where we are. We're here, and this is running in the direction we want to go. What was that you said, Chuck, about using the maps with the pictures of the buildings so you never get lost? No, it's the crew that's lost, not me. I know exactly where I am. Let's go down to here. We're down to, um, uh, Magazzini. We're moving, we're moving. But I promise within two minutes, everyone will be back aboard ship and ready to go. Two minutes? How can you be sure? Well, that's easy, because it's the length of our commercial break coming right up. And they have to be back by then. And if they're not back, they're not going to see Corsica, the birthplace of Columbus and Napoleon. And they're going to miss one of the most spectacular sunsets ever. Plus, I'll have to shoot the rest of the show myself. Hurry back, guys. As the sun rises over the Mediterranean, the Windstar weighs anchor. Destination, the island of Corsica. Let me save you, let me save you, let me go and don't go on to let me reach, let me 
Since Chuck is out scouting the best view of Corsica, I'm going to do a little scouting on my own and meet some of the people. What a great heritage they have here. Greek, Roman, Byzantine, Italian, French. They must have some terrific restaurants here. If you want to go into the rush, if you want to run, if you want to make a lot of money, don't come to Corsica. But if you want to have a nice life, if you want to relax, if you want to, you know, make a little bit of money, be happy with the... Uh, three good meals a day, huh? and uh, then you can be very happy in Corsica. Very, very happy. This is where you get the best view of Corsica, from on top of this hill where there's this chapel. Now, Corsica is an island. It is bordered on the west by Spain, on the north by France, and on the east by Italy. And there were two famous sons of Corsica. One was Christopher Columbus. He was born here, the man who discovered North America. And the other was Napoleon, Emperor of France, a man who tried to rule the world. Napoleon not only tried to conceal his hand, he also concealed the fact that he was born here. In fact, his birth certificate was forged to state that he was born in France. Who knows? Maybe the reason he hid his hand in the first place was to hide an I Love Corsica tattoo. See, this is the not-so-glamorous part of it all. <laughs> bag, I think, it's got batteries, tapes in it. Must weigh 60 pounds. At least. This tripod is like super light. <laughs> you got batteries in there. Batteries, cameras, you name it. 100 pounds a year. 100 pounds. It didn't make any difference, 90 degrees outside yeah. or freezing cold. Really? Probably the best time is just about sunset. Everyone's been out for the whole day. They're very tired. They're suntanned. And they're sitting around the pool, lying around on the decks. We weigh the anchor and we sail off, and it's just romantic. Well, this is the end of the program. All the videotape goes back to the United States. They edit it, and we have a show. No, 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 no. I mean, what's next for you? Oh, for me? <laughs> what's coming up next time? We'll take a look. It's the ultimate college rivalry, USC versus UCLA. We'll draw the battle lines in the Crosstown Showdown. It's the Bruins and the Trojans, tomorrow night. You know, I really think you do have the greatest job in the world. Oh, well, thanks. You know, I think that what makes it such a great job is the people that you meet along the way and the people that we work with on the broadcast. That's why we close every show by showing you the names of some of the people that worked on this show. Till next time, I'm Chuck Henry. And I'm Melanie Vin. So long, everybody. Cruise accommodations provided by Windstar Cruises. Air transportation to France provided by Northwest Airlines. Air transportation in France provided by Air Inter. Hotel accommodations in Monte Carlo provided by the Vista Palace Hotel. Hotel accommodations in Paris provided by the Sofitel Hotel.